Hey everyone, it's Jim from Vowels and More, an online vintage tube store. And today in tube lab number 108, we're going to take a look at the differences between class A and class AB. But first, caution everyone, electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them. Always consult a professional technician when in doubt. Okay, so I was watching a YouTube yesterday about the direct-to-disc recording process Chasing the Dragon Records and Air Studios in London use. The process was recorded by Michael Frammer for his channel Analog Planet. And of course, it was high drama. Cutting a record live is not an easy thing to do. Anyways, I remembered my home theater receiver was actually given a final tuning by Air Studios. And then I remembered it runs Class D. So I thought maybe it was time to talk about the two main classes of operation used for tube amps, and more importantly, how they differ sonically. Okay, so let's start with the easy one, Class A. Typically you're going to have a single power tube, and probably a single driver tube. The driver tube just brings the voltage up so that the power tube can operate at maximum efficiency. Or maximum power would be a better way of putting it. And that power tube is running 100% duty cycle. So it's on full time, full power, pedal to the metal. <laughs> and if we were to pass a... Um, let's say a, f a 500 hertz signal through it and scope it, this is what it would look like. It would be one continuous sine wave. And of course it repeats, right? And there'd be no phase distortion, there'd be nothing. So, and we're going to talk a little bit more about the differences between the two after we've done the class AB. So, what are the big pluses for Class A? Well, detail. When you've got a very clean, clear signal path, you're going to have the detail is going to be it's going to be discernible. You can hear it. If it's masked with distortion, it it becomes cloudy, murky. You may not even know it exists. So, clarity, absolutely. Detail and clarity they define Class A, and speed, the sound tends to sound, the sonics tend to sound very fast. And that's because, I think because we have a low distortion circuit, we've got a very short signal pass, and all those things lead to a quick sound. Harmonics, huge. Now, why are harmonics huge? Well, if you, if you're in one of your favorite concert halls, listening to some acoustic music, let's say, and you think, wow, this sounds great. And then you go home and you listen to the same group, let's say uh, even a recording of it, it, uh, it won't sound the same. Now, what's the difference? The difference are the harmonics. The hall will have the fundamental, that's the, m the vast majority of the sound that you're hearing. So let's say um, your artist plucks a guitar string or passes the bow over a violin. Um, you're going to hear 90, 95, 98% of that sound is going to come to your ears right away. That's the fundamental. What about all those reflections? Well, those are harmonics. Now, in audio, we call those, those distortions, um, which is true, but there are good distortions and bad distortions. So, the after the fundamental, the main sound that you're going to hear in those reflections is the second harmonic. Ah, oh, you say, okay, now I'm starting to understand this. So, in home audio, designers look really carefully at the harmonics. So, second is good, third is bad, it's a discordant sound to our ears in most cases. Some, apparently some third harmonics in certain gear in certain rooms will sound good. The fourth is good, the fifth is bad, the sixth is good, so on. But the thing about harmonics is that the second is the dominant. It should be anyways. 
after the second, well, the fundamental dominates, right? But after that, we have the second, and it might be way, way down, many decibels down from the fundamental. It's only a small percentage of the sound, but it makes a huge difference. But after the second, the, uh, the volume level of the third, the fourth, the fifth, they diminish significantly. So they're much less of an issue. So in class A, with the right tubes and a good design, we will have, we won't filter the harmonics, we'll pass them through, we might even create some, and they will help fill in the sound at home and make the sound fuller, richer, more live-like. Tubes in class A can be amazing. We can run a whole selection of tubes. Some of them are extremely expensive and rare, and some of them, like the GU50, um, which is in our new um, kit monoblock, pure class A amp, pure just means no feedback, zero, zilcho, um, is a great tube. And I've, I've actually done a whole series of videos, and I'm still working on them, that are on our other channel on Melatone Kits. And I run through the GU50 in detail. I, I look at the schematics, I look at the specifications, I look at the sweeps, um, and then we go into detail looking at how the thing is put together. And it's a whole series of videos. For you, some of you, it'll be snooze time. <laughs> if you need something to put you to sleep, jump right into that channel. Um, and, but for others who are interested in, in uh, buying the kit, uh, who are interested in learning how um, these amps are designed, how they're put together, how the circuit works, then absolutely, you'll love these videos. I'll put uh, some links down below for you so you can find them. And the interesting thing is that the GU50 has been called the poor man's 300B. Now, the three, for those of you who don't know, the 300B was an old uh, triode, a high-powered triode um, go, that goes way, way back to the early days of telephone. And it was a booster in telephone systems. And it's just a, a really nice sounding tube. And it became famous... Uh, in, in recent history for pure class A amps. And um, I was really chuffed when somebody had said, uh, I, I forget where I saw it, but somebody had talked about the GU50 and said, that this is the poor man's uh, 300B. And um, I got to I gotta agree, the, the GU50 is an amazing sounding tube in class A. Okay, what about the bad sides of class A? Power, they're inefficient. They're running 100% of the time. They're hot, the pedals to the metal, bass. Now, notice I put it beside clarity. I'm not talking about a lack of bass. I'm just talking about there's no thumpa thumpa. There is no drive on the bass. Uh, bass frequencies, very low frequencies, need a lot of power, big power, huge power to really punch. So if you're into thumpa thumpa, you're not into class A. If you love acoustic bass, in which you can hear the string being plucked. You want the perfect tone. You want those sonics to reverberate on their way to your ears. Then you're going to love Class A bass. Heat, of course, is a problem, especially with the bigger um, Class A amps. They're inefficient. They get hot. Uh, something like the 8-watt GU50 is not a problem. It, it gets warm, but I think the total power consumption is 76 watts. So, which is just a little bit more than a standard incandescent light bulb, a 60 watt bulb. So that's not bad at all. Um, rock and roll. Class A amps are not rock and roll amps. Sure, they can play big music, they can play orchestral music, they can play prog, they can play rock, um, but it's not really their forte. The music that Class A amps really are great for is acoustic, jazz, small ensemble, traditional country, folk, uh, vocal, choral music, absolutely. Um, those, the, the harmonics, the, the whole sort of sound, the sonics of a Class A amp, really lend themselves to that smaller uh, group sound, um, you know, a quintet, quartet sound, uh, acoustic, mostly. 
Now, some uh, crossover music, um, you know, Led Zeppelin had a fair amount of acoustic music incorporated, um, would sound amazing in Class A, and other tracks, not so much. You know, a famous track like Stairway to Heaven, I, I would say would sound probably great in Class A, because so much of it is acoustic. Um, the tubes are on the negative side as well. Why are they positive and negative? Well, the negative side is that the, the really highly desirable rare tubes, uh, rare vintage tubes, are very expensive. But you can go with something like an amp that we've created around the GU50, and you can get away from that problem. Okay, Class A, B. This is a little trickier, but now that we know what Class A is, we'll understand Class A, B a lot easier. So, you're going to have a minimum of two tubes a channel. So, let's just pretend these are EL34s. They could be KT88s, they could be 6V6s, whatever. And you could have two, or you could have four, you could even have eight tubes on a channel, but let's just talk about the simple configuration. This is what the Wilson 10 R8 amp has, and the vast majority of amps sold today will have four power tubes, two per channel. So this tube is running a little bit more than 50% duty cycle, maybe 60 to 70%, depending on how the tube is uh, biased in circuit. And before this tube, there's a phase driver stage. So the phase gets split into positive and negative, and the voltage is applied just like here, but now it's applied to only the positive phase. This tube amplifies the positive phase. It amplifies a little before and a little after. This tube receives the negative phase, and it amplifies a little bit before and a little bit after. And that's why we call these amps push and pull. So on the positive phase, the speaker is pushing out, it's sending the music in our direction, and on the negative phase, the speaker is pulling back, right? Push, pull. Now, <clears throat> what are the pluses? Well, power. You can get a lot more power out of this setup because it's more efficient because when this tube is on, this tube is off. So it can go and have a coffee, it can have a pee break, take, it can cool off, basically. <laughs> I'm having fun. And it can cool off and, and rest a little bit. And when this tube is off, this can be on, right? And this one can take a break. Now, why is that important? It allows the tubes to be biased hotter, to be turned up. So not only is the pedal to the metal, it can be right through the floor. <laughs> but because the two, even though the tube is operating really high, let's say it's operating at 70% of its uh, rating, it's, um, it's able to take a break. And then it can go hard again. On, off, on, off. That's, it cycles like that constantly. Bass. If you've got a more powerful amp, you're going to have better bass. That's just the way it works. Heat. Well, it's also a negative. What the hell am I talking about here? Well, for the power output, the heat is actually good. It's lower. But because you're going to have a minimum of four power tubes, they're going to get hot. <laughs> Even though you've got a lot more power available, your amp's still going to be hot. It's a rock and roll amp, no doubt about it. Um, Prague, uh, even Fusion, Electronica especially. Big pieces of music. If you like your sound coming at you like a hurricane, then you're going to love class a big Class A B amp. That's going to be your thing. Drive. Because it's got that power, it'll have this sense of drive behind it. What are the negatives? Harmonics. The Class AB circuitry cancels uh, the distortions at the power stage. That's just how it works. We're not going to go into too much detail, but basically you lose a whole set of harmonics. Now, what if we had a preamp feeding, let's say, the Wilsonton, uh, one of our universal 6 or 12 SN7 preamps, for example, or kit amps? which generate a lovely sort of sonic uh, uh, 
it's the sound is is filled with these lovely second harmonic sonics is what I'm trying to say those would remain in the signal path they don't get cancelled out at this stage but these amps tend to lose um, a lot of their harmonics they also lose some clarity because when we when we hit this transition fit point here we have um, we have phase distortion we also have um, uh, distortion that's related to splitting the phase so phase linearity is a problem now in better built amps even affordable amps like the Wilsington R8 this is not so bad but you'll be able to hear it I mean, not, you won't hear it in the sense that you'll hear it immediately says oh that's phase distortion what will happen is you'll lose some clarity you lose your harmonics you lose some detail okay now you understand um, tubes. Why are they on the negative side? Well, you got to have at least four power tubes, so it gets expensive. And the circuit and the amp are going to be more complex, so those are more uh, on the negative side. So as you can see, there really is, you know, there's there, the sonics of the Class A amp and the sonics of the Class AB amp are really quite different. And even the amps themselves physically are quite different. And when you're thinking about setting up a system, it really, you really have to think about, I think the first thing you should think about is what kind of music do I like? What amp will work well with that music? And then choose a speaker system that suits that music, your taste, your budget, that fits into the space you've got for it. That's really important. And, and now you can start to put the whole thing together. So really understanding the differences between class A and class AB is one of those fundamentals that you really will make a big difference to your overall sonics to bring great music to your listening area, which I wish upon everyone. <laughs> okay, uh, enough of class A and class AB. And of course, there's a whole series of other classes. You can go all the way up to a very modern uh, high-speed switching class D, but for tube amps, the dominant classes that are in use today are Class A and Class A B. Okay, and I have some great news about the kit amps. Believe it or not, because the exchange rate has shifted quite a bit recently, the price of all the kit amps has dropped a wee bit. So in these inflationary times, I consider that a big win, being able to actually lower our prices. <laughs> now, uh, if you've been paying attention at all to how much things cost at the gas station, uh, gas pump, um, at the grocery store for housing, you know that prices are changing constantly. So they're down right now. At the moment, uh, our inventory is in for the three kit amps we've got. And in fact, inventory is coming in by the thousands of dollars for the GU50 because we're getting ready um, not, we're not ready yet, but we're getting ready to ship um, amps to the test builders. It's going to be a little while yet. The transformers are coming in on December the 15th. When they arrive, we should everything else should be ready to go, and we'll be shipping then. But you'll hear long. If you're on the list of test builders, you're going to hear long before then. Uh, we've, we're actually getting the wet our our um, our store site up with the listing for the GU50 and I'll let you know when you can pre-buy the amp. Okay, so what came in this week? Well, let's put these cards away. Hopefully they were useful. And a whole pile of one tube came in. And one of my favorite tubes of all time. Hang on. Let me bring them out as a pair. Uh, and let's zoom in. We'll talk just briefly, because I think we're running out of time. So, what is this? This is the Slovenia 6SN7 GTA straight plate. Now, they've got, let me get it on camera so you can see it. They've got, often the top is worn off, but they will have lots of chrome coming. See all that chrome? And they're called, I call them straight plates because you see how the plates are not angled. They're back-to-back -back black T plates. Why is the 6SN7 GTA Slovenia so important? This 
actual tube is the next version after the famous bad boys. The bad boys were the GTs. They are a lower spec tube. They're one of the greatest sounding 6SN7s ever made. And because they're lower spec, they often get noisy in modern amps. The GTAs are a modern spec G, G, 6SN7. They don't have those noise issues. And I was really lucky. I found a whole bunch that were clearly organ poles. Uh, the 6SN7 and the 12AU7 were really common tubes in organs, and organs took a lot of tubes. And we are really lucky. This, If I'm right, this organ has been sitting in somebody's rec room or in an old church for almost 70 years and nobody used it. And how do I know that? Look at the testing numbers. They're almost new, they're used tubes, but they're almost testing at 100% they were testing fairly close and balanced. And what happens when an organ uses a twin triode tube like this? Remember, there's two tubes in one envelope. It'll often use one half the tube a lot more than it uses the other half. And you'll end up with numbers like 90-60, <laughs> which is not a good tube um, and not very useful. It has some use, but not much use. So, even though these are close to new old stock, they're in the store and priced as used tubes. Woohoo! So I, I get these in, you know, I get two, four in, I got a whole pile in, so close matches are guaranteed. Okay, if you state, and I think I'm going to do a big show, I'll do a tube lab on the whole line of Sylvania 6S sensors. I love the sonics of these tubes. It is a warm, rich, full sound that I call the Sylvania house sound. And the interesting thing is the early GTAs had a excellent, excellent detail along with that warm, rich sound. So they're really, you know, just, it's just great sounding tubes. They're an audiophile tube. Okay, if you, you know I've got $20 flat rate shipping around the world, but, uh, or and, if your order is $150 or more after discount, the shipping is on, is on us. And I've got a whole bunch of codes you can use to save money, including, whoops, I almost fell, <laughs> including a secret code. And somebody found it just this week, congratulations, and actually was trying to find a, an even better secret code. Well, there is only one good secret code. So once you've found it, uh, don't waste any more time. Stay safe, everyone. Have fun. This is Jim, missing Charles, who should be back in six days. Yes, yeah, six days. Will he be on next Friday? Maybe. Cheers, everyone.